Hi, my name is Sonia and I will be discussing the social cognitive theory and motivational interviewing. In this presentation, I will first go over what the social cognitive theory is, and then um, after that, what motivational interviewing is, and then tie the two together and discuss how motivational interviewing can enhance the social cognitive theory. Social cognitive theory can be used as an effective approach to influence healthful behavior. It examines behavior, personal factors, as well as environmental factors that may drive health habits. The goal is to help individuals understand the root of their health issues and their reasons for making the change. This theory can be appreciated for equipping individuals with the skills to manage their own health habits so a huge part of it too is to help clients practice autonomy. Changing the practices of social systems which have a negative effect on health is the main focus rather than only focusing on changing the habits of individuals or clients. Through methods such as skill building activities, goal setting, learning self-regulation and outcome expectancies, Clients can learn and build healthier habits. These clients can become more self-aware and recognize their behavior, which is the first step to making a change. Goals are created and reinforced, which is what causes a theory of change to work. So they come up with their own goals to use as motivation to really make a behavior change. The components of the social cognitive theory are behavior capability, reinforcements, observational learning, and social support. Um, so now I'm going to go a little bit over about what motivational interviewing is. Motivational interviewing is a goal-oriented style of communication and partnership between the client and the consultant. And it's known to consistently improve health outcomes of patients. Motivational interviewing is not simply where the therapist changes the client, um, but rather the client comes up with his or her own reasons or internal purposes for change and partners with the therapist or the consultant to make that change. The therapist's duty is to support the understanding of the client and enhance motivation for positive change. By coming up with a purpose, clients will have something to use as motivation to reach their goals. Motivational interviewing involves reflective listening, as well as attempting to understand where the client is coming from. So uh, there are four what are known as spirits of motivational interviewing. These are partnership, acceptance, compassion, and evocation. Partnership is a positive relationship between the client and the consultant and is critical for change to occur. Through partnership, clients can understand that they're not alone in reaching their goals. A sense of trust is also established between the client and the consultant, which is important for therapy to be successful. To establish a healthy partnership, it is extremely important to express complete acceptance of client situations, but, doing this, but to do this without showing the approval or any agreement. Clients should know that they will work together as partners with their health professionals to reach a common goal. Acceptance is where the client and everything he or she brings with them is not judged. This really helps to, bring, to build rapport and overall facilitate change. Compassion is also necessary to drive clients toward their goals. Therapists or consultants should attempt to be understanding of their clients without making judgment or without advising, lecturing, or giving any opinions. Context is very important during motivational interviewing. So what we tell the client and how we say what we tell them determines their reactions and outcomes. Evocation is accomplished through supporting self-efficacy. Clients should come up with their own purpose or internal reasons for change. This will drive them toward their goals. Clients hopefully will find a purpose or internal motivation to help them think of advantages to change, of change. 
clients will more likely change their behaviors if they are the ones who express their values, ideas, and goals for change. So instead of lecturing clients or telling them what they should or should not do, they should hold autonomy and freedom to make their own ideas and decisions during change. Now, motivational interviewing can definitely be utilized to enhance the components of the social cognitive theory, and in turn, this can be largely beneficial for clients. Behavioral capability is where clients are provided with knowledge and behavioral skills to perform behavior. This can be done by using visuals and presentations and um, visuals such as presentations and demonstrations. If applying motivational interviewing, a consultant can offer an intervention that encourages the client to come up with uh, their own ideas for behavior change. Another way to incorporate motivational interviewing under the behavioral behavior capability component is for clients to present what they know or learned after a counseling session through a demonstration to their consultant. This will ensure that the client has learned skills and will increase the chances of them fulfilling their behavior, their new behavior skills outside of the counseling sessions. Clients are provided with internal and external reinforcements, which follow the social cognitive theory. This is carried out by rewarding clients and showing recognition. In motivational interviewing, positive reinforcements are used to motivate clients. In both the social cognitive theory and motivational interviewing, optimism is a key component. An example of applying motivational interviewing into this is to ask clients at the end of a session how confident they feel on a scale from 1 to 10 that they will have a successful week. If clients answer with the number 3, for example, they can be asked why they chose a 3 versus a 1. This method can work to keep clients motivated, optimistic, and positive, rather than viewing their answer in a negative way. Observational learning is where clients incorporate positive role models to advocate health, healthful behaviors. Role models can be through media models, peers, and family members. In a motivational interviewing session, clients are asked open-ended questions an example of applying both the co social cognitive theory and motivational interviewing to a counseling session and focusing on observational learning, clients can be asked who they believe is a positive role model and to name the reasons why they view them as such. Clients can then be asked to compare the similarities of their behaviors and their role models' behaviors and which behaviors they would like to adopt as their own. The benefit of social support in the social cognitive theory is that it encourages accountability partners. During motivational interviewing, the clients and the counselor are partners that work toward a goal. An example of using motivational interviewing would be for clients and consultants to set goals together and at the end of a session with the expectation um, that they'll be carried out. If a goal isn't met, for example, consultants can help clients learn about the experience rather than viewing it as a failure or a disappointment. These situations are, are opportunities to explore underlying causes of behaviors and what can be done to succeed the next time around. Even though the client, and the con even though the client has the consultant as a partner, it's still important for the client to maintain his or her autonomy. Now, I just went over motivational interviewing and social cognitive theory and um, how the two can be a strong force together. And using them together can really um, be effective in helping a client with their behavior change. So thank you for watching.